we've looked at two out of the three acronyms I asked you about. This one, this one, and I'm about to tell you about this one. RS stands for? Random sample. Random sample. Why, why is a random sample useful if you're sampling? I think there's an important phrase I put down in another color here. I want equal representation because that will be free of bias, at least in theory. Okay. But random samples aren't perfect, right? So what's better than a random sample is that if you've got a stratified random sample, you'll make sure if there are like subgroups within your target population, you'll get them all equally, okay? Ah. Uh, but, for how awesome stratified random samples are, they're not perfect. Because imagine if you were here. Okay. Now, you're part of the, um, the customer satisfaction quality review team for the restaurant. So you want to get a survey of everyone who you know, comes to your, to your shop and, and you know, actually eats your food and so on. So you think, oh, I know, I want to make sure this is unbiased, okay? So I don't want to just pick, you know, um, a particular time of day. I don't want to pick just a particular McDonald's, etc. I'm going to spread it all out, what have you. So I think, oh, I should do a random sample of some kind, okay? What would be the problem with a random sample? Like just a straightforward random sample. Only a certain type of person eats from McDonald's. Okay, so if my target population... <laughs> that was more political than you probably intended. It's like... I'm not one of those people. Um, <laughs> to of going to McDonald's. A random sample, right? There are big options, right? A random sample depends on... I showed you three ways of getting a random sample. Do you remember what they were? They were only like a little while ago. There was a spreadsheet, there was a calculator, and then there was the... Okay, now for each of those... For each of those, there was kind of an assumption, right? Sorry, that's an S. The, the assumption was, I can give numbers to every single person in my target population, and then I can, at my own leisure, come up with some random series of numbers and then ask those people, okay? Now, just think of a normal day at the restaurant. It's a pity Renee's not here. You have no idea how many people are going to turn up to a restaurant, right? And even if you were to number every single one of them as they came through, after they're gone, they're gone, like they spent like five minutes here and then it's finished, okay? You don't get to access them anymore. So all of these approaches are gonna be problematic if you're here. You can't just sort of, you know, hey, everyone stay in one spot for <laughs> until the end of the day and then I'll randomly pick out. I need something that will work with this. So, last subheading for the day, last subheading for the day. <laughs> the last kind of way to get a sample out of your target population is called a systematic sample. Yeah. I was going to say no, subsample. Okay, all right. We're always there, guys. No, now, interestingly, <laughs> when you look at the word, you're like, hold on a second. Systematic? Isn't systematic the exact opposite of random? And it kind of is, right? A systematic sample means, here's, here's my definition, which I'd love for you to write down with me, right? A systematic sample is taking um, people or items, I'll explain the items in a second, taking people or items at regular intervals. So how would this work when you're there at Macca's, okay? Well suppose you want to interview, uh, survey, say 5%, 5% of, um, of the people who eat at Macca's that day, okay, 5%. Well, it's easy to get 5% without doing any of this stuff with random numbers by simply saying, okay, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just wait for people to start coming in. Wait for start, people to start coming in, right? And as I tick them off, as I just count, when I get to the 19th person who's eaten, then I suddenly sit up, right? And I say, okay, the last person the 20th person, I'm just going to interview you. Because think about it, right? If I interview one out of 20, I don't know how who the 20 will be. I'm just getting them in some kind of random order, okay? 
one out of 20 is 5%. Does that make sense? And business is pretty quick. So then I'll interview the 20th person and then I guess some more people will roll in and I'll ignore all of them. And then I'll interview person number 40. And then person number 60. Now the advantage of this, right? So this is, um, i.e. the 20th person, the 40th person, the 60th person. I don't need to know anything about these people, right? And if I do this all day, I will get an equal cross-section of like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I won't get like a bias because I only get the people who wake up early enough to get to Macca's or the people who don't wake up early enough so they've got to go to Macca's to get their breakfast or whatever it is, okay? I'm getting a cross-section across the entire day with no prior knowledge about what these people are like. Does that make sense? Yeah. So despite the fact that you're like, wait, I went from random to these are progressively more structured and more predictable, but all they're trying to do is get equal representation and this will do it for me okay now one last item before I seek the other questions I said items not just people um, suppose and this is another important example if you're doing quality control this is actually a very very common question that gets done right if you're in a factory Quality control is interested in all of the product being made at your factory, okay? But checking every single one, I mean, if you have really, really high standards, then yeah, you'll check every single one. But sometimes you can't check every single one because if, for instance, you're making food, and it's like, well, I have to taste this kind of thing and make sure, well, you can't taste every single one going out because then you can't sell it anymore, right? So you'll do something like this, right? You'll do something like this. You say, okay, every, every 100th cake that comes out of this, we're going to actually open it up, we're gonna taste it, we're gonna make sure no one kills over and dies, that type of thing, to make sure that the quality control is assured, okay? So even though it's not about, this is sort of getting away from like surveys and asking, you're not gonna, so a cake, how is your run through the factory? You're not gonna ask that. You're looking for something, but it's, that, it's the same idea. Does that make sense? You're systematically going through, you're getting a sample, that represents your whole population. Does it make sense? Yeah, I did make sense.